so adding the phone is actually very straightforward. So what you're going to want to do on your cell phone, just make sure that Bluetooth is turned on. And we're going to start off on the Apple CarPlay, or the Apple side of things, I should say. So on your phone, just make sure you've got Bluetooth turned on, and we're going to go Search add phone. Search vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, and we're waiting for sync to show up. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. We want to make sure they pair up, and they do, or so the numbers matched up. For your up. safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice-activated features while your vehicle is in motion. All right, so we're connected now, and it's asking us for a few more things. So we definitely want to turn 911 assist on, and the reason why is because if the vehicle senses that it's in a collision in certain circumstances, it'll automatically die on 911 for you. Now, interesting part is that if for whatever reason you forgot to per, uh, connect your phone again when you jump into the vehicle, as long as your phone's on and you're in an accident, the sync screen is automatically going to try to reconnect to your phone, which is definitely a nice thing. We've got our contact download, so we can easily add our contacts in if we wanted to. Yes, no, up to you. And we hit finish. And as you can see, I'm connected. We've got contacts, phones, we've got my phone. We can change out phones, so if we've got multiples connected, that's where we're going to do it. We've got the keypad there for the phone. We've got text messages and we've got Siri. So it's definitely a nice thing because we do a long press and hold on the steering wheel. We've got Siri activated there. So we do have the flexibility to be able to press the button on the steering wheel in order to activate our Siri assistant if we wanted to. So we do have a few different options for listening to radio and things like that. So if we go back to our audio for a second, we've got our source now and we've got my phone or we've got LiveX Live, which is just a radio app. So we could select that and we can literally enable in order to be able to listen to music this way if we want to. So we've got quite a few different options that are available. If you've got audio connected to your phone, we can just select that in order to be able to listen that way instead. So very straightforward in order to be able to set up to listen to Bluetooth audio that way. But we've also got the flexibility to use both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of this thing. So using Apple CarPlay, very straightforward, we take our USB cable there and we're going to insert it into our front USB port. Opposite end of the cable, we're just plugging ourselves in. And there you go. So as you can see, we're connecting Apple CarPlay. We have to continue. We have to agree. And it'll take a second there. Do we want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Absolutely, we want to do that. And literally that simple, like two seconds and we're fully set up. But as you can see, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze. And we can use any of these map applications directly through the screen and very similar to the actual built-in media screen. It's just, it's very straightforward. And it's super responsive all at the same time. Push the button along the very bottom in order to jump back into this screen. But as you can see, ton of different options that are available. We've got our base connecting screen. We've also got a few other options there for messages. We've got phone. We can listen to podcasts through this on top of that. So a lot of different options. Move back, we've got our audio books. So if you are a big fan of CarPlay, that's where we're going to set it up. And as you can see, ton of different options that are available. But one of the great things that's available inside of CarPlay for this thing is that we've got the flexibility. So if we go into our general settings, we jump into CarPlay, we've got Sync 3, and then we can customize it. So along the very top there, so we can easily customize by doing a simple drag and drop. So let's say you wanted podcasts first, we can do that. You want audiobooks right after that, we can do that as well. Maybe you don't like podcasts, you can remove it. It gets rid of it completely from the screen if you wanted to go that route. If you want to add it back in, you can, or you can just do a reset in order to bring it back to that factory default instead. Literally that simple kind of setting up and navigating through. So we can easily search for addresses, we can star things out, we can use the microphone there as well if we wanted to. So it's great because if we wanted to just speak in order to dictate to navigate, we've got the flexibility to do it. That's the same for Waze, for Google Maps, Apple Maps, whatever the case may be. And then if we need to get back to the main screen, we just hit the sync button there and that brings us back to the main screen here. Because we're connected through CarPlay now, we can jump into our map application on our phone. So if you didn't have factory navigation, this button would show up if you were connected through either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. CarPlay and you had a map application installed. We can jump back into CarPlay there if we want to, jump back home, we can go into some basic settings, and we've got a ton of other options. So we've, we're connected through CarPlay right now, so we can either remove my phone or we can toggle CarPlay off. So as you can see, we're toggled off and it brings us back to our factory defaults instead. We can jump back now, series of other options available. So if we go into our phone now, we can view devices. So if you've got multiple devices connected, you can set a connection priority. We can add in more devices, which we'll get to in a second. We can manage out contacts, which I don't think, yeah, I didn't connect my contacts here. We can set specific ringtones. We've got roaming warnings and a few other options. Moving back, 
that's the basics of setting up an Apple device and connecting to Apple CarPlay inside of the vehicle. Now, setting up an Android device is literally the exact same process. So if we jump back into phone for a second, I'm still connected to the iPhone. So what we're gonna do is we can change phone there, or we can go settings, phone, view devices, add device. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So definitely a little bit longer to go that way, but not impossible. And then on the phone, what we're doing is same idea. We're just gonna wait for our Sync 3 screen to show up there. There we go. So as you can see there, Sync is now available. So we're just gonna click on Sync and it's pairing up. Confirm that the pin displayed on Sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Hey, and we are connected there. So literally that's simple safety, to do it. Please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. It wants to know if we want to allow access to messages, to contacts and things like that. So we're gonna say no for now. Now, if you've got multiple phones connected, you're gonna have the option of setting one up as a favorite. So if you can literally select that now if you want to, or you can add it in later. So I'm gonna skip that for now to show you how to add it in. So we're now connected. So we jump back into phone. We've got the Galaxy connected. We can change out phones this way now. So we have multiple phones connected Connected, so we can click through to connect either the phone and media, strictly the media, or we can remove it. So very straightforward to do. We jump back into the phone, we can make it a favorite now, so it's got connection priority. So if both phones are in the vehicle, who's gonna be connected to first? And then as you can see there, we can easily remove the other device if we wanted to. Three, two, one, that one is now disconnected, and literally that simple. And then very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, we've got a few other options. So we've got our call list, contacts, keypad, we've got our phone assistant. So we can just press and hold the button on the steering wheel there. So it's a long button press in order to activate our phone assistant on the Samsung side of things. But very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side, we've also got the option of setting up Android Auto. So we're just gonna get our USB cable and we're just gonna plug in opposite end of the cable. And we're just going to plug ourselves into the phone and three, two, and here we go. So Android Auto would like to, so we're gonna hit next, and we're just gonna continue. We have to agree here, and three, two, one. We are now fully connected. So it is so simple to connect along the bottom there. We can also set this up. So we've got our traffic, satellite, route options, and a number of other things. Along the very bottom, we can jump into our podcast if we want to jump back home, we've got our audio notification center or our Google Assistant. So we could use Bixby if we wanted to, or we could say, okay, Google. And that brings up the Google Assistant instead. So it is nice that we've got that option. We've got our weather podcast, we've got Google Maps and a number of other options. So as you can see there, we've also got Waze. So connecting through, literally that simple to be able to do it. And we can jump back home again there three, two, one, and back. And that brings us back to this main screen. So whatever screen we're on, we could just press the button there to jump back to the main Sync 3 screen. Very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side. We press that button to jump back to this main screen, jump back home again. And we can also jump into our settings now. And phone we can't click on because we're connected through Android Auto. So we go Android Auto, we can temporarily disable so that we're charging the phone up while we're connected. So we've got that flexibility. We could literally just disconnect this way if we wanted to just by plug, unplugging the USB cable. But one of the nice things is that very similar to the iPhone side of things, we do have the flexibility to be able to set up things a little bit differently and we can customize the screen. And then very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, if we do a quick search for Android Auto, we're looking for our Android Auto settings there. So we click through and we've got our previously connected cars. We can customize the launcher. So if let's say you wanted your, ooh, I don't know, maybe podcast at the very top instead, maybe you wanted to bring weather all the way down to the bottom, you've got the flexibility to do it. You do have to fully shut down the launcher. So we have to launch out and then we have to reconnect through Android Auto. So there we go, so we're gonna turn back on. So we've literally gotta relaunch everything. That should connect there, perfect. In order for those changes to take into effect. So as you can see there, we're now our podcasts are now our number one connection priority. And there were a lot of other options that were available on top of that, but you, it is nice that we still have the flexibility to be able to customize. We just have to make sure that when we customize it here, we have to actually hop out of Android Auto and back in in order to be able to customize the launcher there. So not impossible. We've got our Google voice detection there. And this specific one, so it is obviously, as you can see, a wired connection. That's the same for both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So this is the Sync 3 media screen. Ford's Sync 4 screen has wireless, but we're not on Sync 4 in this thing as of yet. So it still is a wired connection, but we could go back home again by pressing the Ford button along the very top. And as you can see, they're fully connected. We can go there, we can disconnect. 
There we go, so we're strictly charging up again. And then we can jump back home and go into our phone and we can look at our same settings there. So what we saw on the iPhone side, we can go to devices, Galaxy, we can remove it and disconnect. Three, two, one, the phone is now disconnected and it literally is that simple, setting up Android and iPhone devices inside of this vehicle.